Hi there, I'm Steffi Sear from Inner Insights and I wanted to bring more life to your life. Um, talking about ferments, so going back to ancient ways or your grandparents' ways really, just looking at a way to preserve food that helps you break down nutrients or breaks them down a little bit for you and helps preserve them for a long, long time in a very safe manner. Essentially, most ferments are a lacto-fermentation made with salt, usually. Um, so we've got some different ferments going on, and I'm going to share some different recipes with you. I've got some sourdough, some kombucha, some kvass, some fermented uh, lemons. These are amazing. This creates this unami flavor, which is your fifth basic flavor, um, fifth basic taste, rather. And it's just an addictive taste. Go ahead and try that on your charcuterie board. Just cut up the lemons and eat it with the rind and the seed. So delicious. I'm addicted. I do that everywhere now. I've been traveling for the last year and I uh, carry a jar of fermented lemons around with me. It takes about a month to ferment them. You're just quartering them and filling them with salt and then you can add whatever herbs you want to it um, for the benefits of the nutrients in the herbs. And also for this beautiful color, I've used the hibiscus, which is really good for the heart. And it's a fabulous source of bioflavonoids and vitamin C, essentially your ester C. So my, um, after a month of curing on the counter in a dark place, all ferments go in dark places. This one I do on a full moon cycle coming into next week or the next few days. I'll be putting that in a smaller jar and putting it in the fridge. So your hands just have to be clean for the ferment. And I've submersed a cup, you can probably hear that, to push down the lemons so they all ferment at the same time and the, there's no water added, that's actually just all lemon juice. It'll start to exude the lemon juice, that's what the salt does. Just think about if you've ever made sauerkraut, same thing happens, right? You massage the cabbage and all this water exudes out of it. Um, but I do go ahead and add another bag of organic lemon juice to that to make sure there's enough juice to really submerse them. So if they're not submerged, you might have to add more than the lemons existing in there, or their juice rather. That's lemons, that's it, and they're fermented, so they are easy to break down and digest, they're way more nutritious, and they last forever. The next thing is kombucha, and you've probably heard lots about kombucha and now how beneficial it is for your digestion. Um, I'm just gonna show you a three-step to my kombucha right now. It's uh, rhubarb season, so I've been making a rhubarb ginger kombucha. So I take the SCOBY, and the recipe for this is essentially two cups of the remaining kombucha from, so let's say I was to start a new batch, I'm gonna take two cups out of here. First, I'll remove the SCOBY and put it in my SCOBY hotel. So this is keeping all the SCOBYs. Every month, it'll give a new mushroom or fungi, I guess, SCOBY. And I'll put that in a jar and cover it. And so if somebody needs or wants to make kombucha, I've got a SCOBY hotel. Or if something happens to mine and gets damaged, maybe I've got garden nails and it doesn't work out. Sometimes batches don't work out and that's okay. And then you've got this extra ready to start all over. So the recipe for kombucha is four cups of water that I'm gonna boil with two tablespoons of a black tea and uh, how many cups of sugar? Not, not cups, sorry. Uh, let me just go to my recipe to make sure I don't screw this up. Three quarters of a cup of sugar. And I use a, a sucanat or a sugar cane sugar, yeah? And then I'm gonna just let that steep for 15 minutes. So I've got four cups of water, two or three cups of your black tea, and three quarters of a cup of sugar. Let that ferment, or let that steep for 15 minutes, and then strain it, and go ahead and add that, once it's cooled down a bit, to two cups of your remaining tea from the last batch. And to that, you'll wait until the temperature is about 70 to 90 degrees, and then you can go ahead and add your eight cups of water, or you can add the eight cups of water, filtered water first rather, but then you can go ahead and add your SCOBY. So you can go take that SCOBY back out with clean hands and let it um, get into your new batch and ferment. So after about 10 days, maybe two weeks of fermenting in that first fermentation, I'll strain that and then I'll add it to uh, clean bottles 
that I have maybe a quarter of fruit in there, uh, usually tart fruits. So this batch is the rhubarb batch, rhubarb and ginger, and I've just put that in a bullet, rah, 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 gave it a few pumps, and then let it sit for about five days, maybe even 10 days if you really like it tart. So uh, the longer you let it sit, the more it's gonna use up the sugars that are in there and get a fizzier and more tart ferment. So I like mine tart. Um, and I don't like them too sweet. So I let it go for at least another seven to 10 days, and then it'll have, did you hear that, little sis? Um, that zestiness to it, it'll give it that nice life. And then so I'm just gonna strain it and then bottle them. This is the one that I can drink. I mean, you can go ahead after seven days and drink that, ain't nothing wrong with the uh, rhubarb chunks. Just open up and swallow <laughs> but if you don't want chunks in your kombucha you'll find that there's just a little bit of settlement at the bottom which is healthy and you want to go ahead and drink that that's the um the goodness of it and that's why you might give it a little shake whoo don't hit glass on glass um okay so that was kombucha it takes about a month you're running things on a full moon cycle maybe to have more energy of using the um the planets using the elements and the planets so during the sunny days too, I like to work. And even your thoughts going into this, you're activating life, so what are you bringing to it? I'm really blessed and honored to be able to take care of somebody else's ferments right now as I'm traveling and I'm benefiting by gaining life from it. So I really honor that and think of that as I'm making it and um, I feel like that gives me even more life or even more joy, even more benefits. Okay, sourdough. So once it doubles, which it's doubled, it's time to make bread. I've stashed the bread away now. But the sponge, I'll tell you the recipe to that. So if you get somebody else's sourdough, you're just gonna use a little bit of their sourdough to make a new sponge and to make your bread. So we'll get started assuming across the board it's 75 grams of the three ingredients to make your sponge. So you'll take 75 grams of somebody else's sourdough 75 grams of a warm water. Go ahead and mix them together so they're pretty well dissolved, the uh, chunks, but might have a little bit of chunks left in it. Don't over stir it. And then go ahead and add your flour. And at the beginning, you might use a white flour till you get more um, used to playing with them. Everything's organic. So I'm gonna stir that and add it to my jar, and then I'll put the elastic as the marker of where that is. Then you can go ahead and pop that in the fridge or you can leave it on the counter. It'll certainly happen faster on the counter. I'm not in a rush. Um, I'm making bread once to twice a week as it is with it in the fridge. So uh, it's just me here. That's a lot of bread and um, yeah. So I leave it in the fridge. When it's doubled, it's time to make bread. So now the bread recipe I would take from this doubled batch um, and it's 145 grams of your starter and then you're gonna add 14 grams of salt and 300 grams of water and give that a good stir, dissolve it all, or stir it without the salt, sorry. So 300 grams of water, give that a good breakdown with your starter, 145 grams of that. And then add your two different flours. Um, this is the recipe I'm following here. So it's an organic whole wheat flour and organic white flour, 200 grams, sorry, 220 grams of both. 220 white, 220 whole wheat, and then 14 grams of your salt. And you're just gonna give that a stir. Somebody might have a whole bar and put it in there for five to seven minutes. I think the less you play with bread, just like pie, the better. So I knead it um, till it's fairly well mixed, but my, it's gonna eat, it's a live ferment. So it's gonna eat at it and mix itself up in its own way. So I let that sit in a bowl with a tea towel over it under uh, a warm counter. And when it's doubled in size, it's time to pop it in the oven. You might have a cast iron pot that you heat up first at 450 degrees for maybe half an hour. And then you'll take your bread that's doubled in size and you're gonna pop it into that hot pot and cook it with the lid on it for half an hour at 440, 450, and then maybe another 13 minutes with the lid off at the same temperature and that's bread. The leftovers, after you've removed the 145 grams, is the discard, and that you can make pretzels with, you can make crackers with, you can also make the moistest muffins ever with, um, and I add some 
natural yogurt to mine, a half cup of natural yogurt to my sourdough muffins, which does make the moistest muffins you've ever had. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're definitely the moistest I've ever had. Okay, I think that's it. Um, yeah, oh, and the kvass, um, you can watch a video on that. I feel like I've rambled enough. But um, this is a beautiful color, look at that. I put cranberries and mint in after I've, that was the second ferment. Uh, the first ferment to it was the lemon and rhubarb. And so that took about two weeks and I can strain that or just open up the hatch and put it all into me because it's good for you. And essentially when things are good for you, things move and you feel better. So you should notice that your digestion has more movement. Maybe you have irritable bowel or some kind of chronic um, stubborn bowels and this can certainly help accelerate the process of flushing and that detox is essential. We really should be having a poop a day or a poop for every meal, right? And it should be the size of your wrist and from your wrist to your elbow and it should float and be light brown in color. If it's not, um, you know, two stinky can tell us things, pencil poos can tell us things, whether it's nerves or not enough fiber in the diet or too much protein or not enough whatever, right? Um, so I can tell you, <laughs> mine, since I've been doing these five different ferments while I've been here, um, I usually have good bowels anyways, but yeah, instead of just being from wrist to elbow, I'm having the letter U. So every day my full colon is getting this irrigation and I gotta say, I've got like, yeah, I'm loving the flush. I've got a little bit of a sourdough pot belly on me, which I think is really healthy and fun and happy. Um, but I am flushing really well. And so I've got tons of energy. Not only is this uh, a cleanse on the body, but getting us all these extra nutrients as well, right? So the benefits of fermenting, I just to recap that, mentioned that you absorb more nutrients. We absorb more iron and more zinc. Fermentation itself usually will create things like B12 and vitamin K, things that are essential in our diet and we might not be getting enough of anyways. And they certainly create a lot of enzymes and pre-digested prebiotics and probiotics. So an abundance of reasons to go back to these ancient ways. I hope this was helpful and I'd love to hear in the comments if you can let me know what's your favorite recipe. Maybe you've got um, a ferment lineage, maybe something's been passed down. I'd love to hear your sacred little tidbits of what is brewing in your kitchen and um, yeah, if you want to share any recipes, I would love that. Steffi at innerinsights.com if you have any questions. Take care and be well. Blessings.